All right, so next topic here is how to do the chi-square test, which is the test of statistical significance we're going to use to see whether or not the expected phenotype ratios that we've calculated are matching the actual measured or observable results of these particular crosses. Okay. So what we're going to do is um, test our prediction. Is our prediction going to fit? Or we're making a model of sorts um, to see if we can predict the outcome of the cross, okay? Using either for a simple cross, a Punnett square, and for the more complicated crosses, a fork line method, okay? And then we're going to get our observable results, which is going to be counts, like how many offspring, how many flies, how many um, baby chickens, such. How many adorable Labrador puppies, okay? And so once we compare these, well, how do we know our prediction is valid? What are we actually testing against? And then we're looking at that, did we actually make the right prediction or did we um, perhaps mess up our cross calculations? Okay. Generally, we can't say the data is wrong. You know, if these are the five puppies of a litter, those are the five puppies of a litter. But we can say like, well, maybe, maybe mama dog snuck out late at night and uh, that's not actually the dad couldn't possibly be the parent because of what the um, actual observable data was. So, or there was there a mistake in the experiment is sort of the, the way we're going there. Okay, so in order to perform our test to see whether or not our findings are significantly different from what we expected, we're going to do the chi-square test, which is this uh, Greek letter chi uh, uppercase x with the uh, square notation. Okay, and that's going to compare the size of the difference between our expected results and our observed results. Okay, we're going to generate a chi-square value. And then we're going to compare that value to a p-value or critical value from the chi-square chart based on the degrees of freedom and whatever our setting of alpha is. Okay? And if our value is larger, this, if our differences are really big, then our, our, our calculated value is going to be very big, and so the difference is going to be significant. We go over the cutoff of the um, chart number, all right? And then if our value is very small, if we have very small differences and they're not very uh, important, then our differences are not significant, okay? So in this case, a small means we do fit the prediction and large means the differences are very big, we don't fit the prediction. Okay, so let's run through an example. Uh, in flies, our wild type wings is a dominant trait compared to vestigial wings where they're kind of small and crinkly. So if we've got two heterozygotes mating, how many of their offspring will have vestigial wings? Now, this question is asking us for the phenotype. Okay? Here are our parents' genotypes and we'll do the cross. Uh, the one to two to one genotype ratio with two heterozygotes crossing there. And then our phenotypes, uh, three quarters of the offspring should come out with wild type wings and one quarter with vestigial. So our phenotype ratio, we would write that as three wild type to one vestigial. Okay. So here's the, that's our expected ratio. Now our students are going to actually collect some data. So in lab section one, they bred this cross of flies and out of 100 offspring, 64 had wild type wings and 36 had vestigial wings. Was there a significant difference between observed and expected flies at alpha equals 0.05? Okay, so um, these charts, these sort of charts of how to build the uh, chi-square calculation will be provided, okay? The first step is to put in our uh, phenotypes here. We've got our wild type and our vestigial, okay? And under our observed column, uh, we put in our numbers. We have 64 wild type and 36 vestigial, so that's a total of 100. So the first thing a lot of people want to put down is, okay, so we expect three wild type and one vestigial. Uh, no, that is not the case, okay? That is... Uh, the wrong answer. So uh, what we're going to do is take our total here, this 100, and we're going to multiply the 100 by the ratio we're expecting to see. Okay, so three quarters of our flies out of the 100, okay, we expected to see 75 of those um, uh, be wild type and 25 of them be vestigial. Okay, so the next thing we do, I clicked a little early, we take our observed minus our expected and we find that difference. In this case, our difference is 11. We've got 11 fewer uh, wild type than we expected to see and 11 more of the vestigial than we expected to see. And so for the rest of the calculation here, um, we take our observed minus expected, then we square that number, okay? And then in our final column, we take our observed uh, by our expected squared and we're gonna divide it by the expected, okay? So we get 
In this column, we get 1.61, we get 4.84. And the last thing we do is total it up to get our chi-square value, okay? Uh, in this case, which is uh, six point something, okay? So our value was six point something. Hmm. We gotta compare that to our chart, our uh, chi-square distribution chart here. Uh, and so we've got two uh, sides of our column here. We've got our alpha value, the probability here. And in this case, our alpha value, they told us it was going to be 0 0.05. I'm pretty much always going to tell you what your alpha value should be. We have degrees of freedom over here. And now degrees of freedom, we calculate that's a number of categories minus one. So in this case, we had two categories. We had wild type and vestigial. So our degree of freedom is our two categories minus one is one. We have one degree of freedom in this calculation. So it's going to be long this row. And then our alpha was given as 0.05. So this is the column. So here we go. There's our critical value, 3.84. Okay. So our calculated value was bigger. We had pretty large differences there. Our okay, something around six. Okay, our high value was 6.45, but the critical value is 3.48. That was the, the calculation differences here. So since our chi-squared value was calculated from the differences between the observed and expected values, the difference was pretty large. So the chi-square is large too. So this means there is a statistically different difference between the observed and the expected results. The data and the prediction were not a good fit for each other. Something happened. Even either we made the wrong prediction or the students did the cross incorrectly. I'm going to go with possibly something happened with the cross there because this almost looks like a 2 to 1 ratio instead of a 3 to 1. Anyway, so let's see how the other lab section did. Okay. Now students in lab section 2 had the same cross of flies and they bred 215 offspring. 159 had wild type wings and 56 had vestigial wings. Okay, so again, the first thing we do, we put our phenotypes here and we plug in our observed and look at our total. Now for our expected, we're going to calculate how many out of this pool of 215 would we expect to see if our prediction is correct. Okay, so in this case, we multiply 215 by three quarters and we get 161.25. That's okay. We expect it can we can expect a percentage or a decimal place that's that's fine uh, and then in our vestigial we expected like 53.75 all right and then we're going to fill in the rest of our chart here with the observed minus the expected and the observed minus expected squared and then divided by the expected and we're going to add that up and we're going to get the giant whopping total of 0.27 very very small differences from what we were expecting okay so students in lab two got this very, very small chi value because their differences were very small. It is well under the critical value. So since the chi-square value was um, calculated from that very small difference, the differences were small and the chi-square value is under a small two. So this is not different. Okay, There is not a statistically significant difference between the observed and expected results. And the data fits the prediction. Okay? So in this case, it's, it worked out well. <clears throat> So when you're answering these types of problems, I want to give you some uh, just sort of feedback on how I'm, what I'm looking for and how I'm grading these things, okay? So key thing is write it out. If uh, you do everything in your head and you don't put the numbers down um, and it's wrong, then I can't kind of give you credit. Whereas I do give partial credit if you can set it up correctly, but say there's a math error, I'm only going to take off points for the math error, but uh, so it's uh, better to kind of write it out and, and make it super visible. Okay. Uh, when you're writing out ratios, don't give me one to two to one. One two to one what? I need you to write out what the genotype is or what the phenotype is in the in the long format of the ratio so that I know what you're talking about. If it's not completely clear that you know what you're talking about, I can't give you credit for it. So just take a little extra time and write it out nice and clear so I can give you credit for, for doing it correctly. Um, don't just say yes or no if I'm asking for like, well, well what happened was what was the conclusion drawn from this? Uh, I'm looking for some like there was or there was not a statistically significant difference between the observed and expected results. Yeah, I want to see that. I want to see you drawing that full conclusion and stating the result of the statistical test. Okay, and in addition, 
does the prediction fit the results and why or why not? So why did we even do this test? Like what were we looking for? I need to see you write it out so that I know you're understanding what's happening within this, um, within these tests. Okay. All right. Good luck. We will do a lot of these during uh, class recitation. So I will see you there.